Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a pleasant evening. This video is a Halloween one-shot. I played with Dingo and Z, with Felix as the DM. Hope you spooks enjoy. Sure to give you a fright. The module to this game is in a link in the description. We hope you have a spooky Halloween night. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> uh, we thought we'd kind of do a fun little uh, D&D session for you guys. Uh, kind of a spookum style. Uh, yeah, people have, have been apparently writing to us. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but people have been writing to us and saying that they want to see us uh, doing a D&D game together. <laughs> so <laughs> this is it. Yeah. <laughs> This is your this is your season's treat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A Halloween treat. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in the roster we have well myself is Dingo from Dingo Doodles, uh, the YouTube channel, along with uh, Felix, who is the DM of the Fool's Gold campaign that I am animating. Howdy. And who else do we have? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know myself. I'm very confused. <laughs> I am one of uh, the two guys on this that are going to sound almost identical. Oh, I am yeah. Z. <laughs> um, and a completely and, different person. From yeah, that's a different guy. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I yeah, I'm I'm Z Bashu, and uh, I do the animated spellbook, um, and I'll be playing uh, Geldmoss. Uh, usually called Moss, the nature cleric today. And I'm Puffin, uh, Ben. Uh, I'm going to be playing a Zebo, the uh, cleric, the uh, the trickster domain cleric. We're all clerics here. I'm going to be playing Call Lee, uh, who has a southern accent, so you're going to have to get used to that. Um, and she is a cleric. We are all level four, um, and we follow Paylor. So we're gonna we're just gonna jump into this and see how it goes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, I'm sure it'll go fine. Yeah. I'm sure it'll go fine. this is a five E campaign too. We all play D and D. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we should be fine, right? Yeah, should be. <laughs> Maybe. All right. So the three of you are all clerics of Paylor, as we said. You like to get sent around to missions by your local church or monastery, whichever you prefer. And um, last year, you were sent to the town of Bergheim to bless their light-up festival. Oh, yeah. And they all tried to murder us. <laughs> yeah, that went so great. <laughs> yeah. Their mayor is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he got eaten by a cat, though, he's so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's a dead asshole. He's a dead asshole. And you stole his dog. I, well, <laughs> it needed a host. <laughs> I like to think that Bagel and I found each other. <laughs> Yeah, Moss now has uh, the dog Bagel, which is from the previous episodes that we did, uh, has stolen that dog now. So yeah. we have a dog. Yes, and this is my rat, Yon. <laughs> Yon. <laughs> Yon. <laughs> okay, Bagel the Basset Hound. He's a good boy. Watch Bagel save this entire group from something. Yeah, Bagel will be the top. <laughs> Ba bagel ex machina. Yeah, yeah. He gets blessed by Paylor and becomes frickin' deity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then, to get, kick this off, this year, the three of you have been sent to the small town of Mollywort. And you are assisting the local temple of Paylor to hand out candy and pamphlets during the Fiend's Eve festivities. Hmm. I was built for this. This is what I'm made for. So this is a festival where, you know, people like to dress up as monsters and uh, go around and collect candy. You know, it's like your standard Halloween. People think that this will help them, you know, ward off evil from their town. And But really, it's just a fun party, so. I'm up for it. You guys are kind of outside the, uh, the Temple of Paylor. You're handing out candy to kids, you're handing out pamphlets, probably trying to convert them. I guess, Kali, you're more aggressive than others about this. Oh yes, I am very much just like, I kneel down and grab them by the shoulder and be like, have you learned about the beauty of Paylor? And then I just go on to a full tangent on Paylor. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of this child, who I'm assuming this child is just like, leave me alone. <laughs> Can I just have my candy lady? 
please? <laughs> I what I'm doing is like I I'm putting the candy in their thing, but I'm minor illusioning, so it looks like I'm putting in way more. Like ah, here's ten pieces, and it's actually only two. It's like you can't afford more. <laughs> like thanks, Mister. That's more on the evil scale. <laughs> That's pretty evil. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think Moss is probably behind Kali like a hype man. Just every now and then, just like yelling out like, He is a vengeful god! <laughs> <laughs> We're vengeful. Make sure to check all your candy. Beware the nine elves! <laughs> <laughs> Are we really gonna be the people who it's like we we're putting the pamphlets in just the like you need to be safe, <laughs> need to be safe. I guess you are. It's up to you. <laughs> I heard followers of Loth were putting razor blades in the candy. Yeah, yeah. While well, while Paylor always gets the full candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys spend the better half of the night aggressively converting children. <laughs> if you want candy, you got to tell me exactly a line from the Paylor book, like word for word. And she has it memorized. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what? Why don't you roll a persuasion to see just how many kids you're converting? Okay. Okay. That is a 12. A 12? You might just be a little bit too aggressive. I think you get one or two, but... I mean, Geld Moss, you're right behind her. You get the feeling most of them just kind of nod and smile just to get their candy and leave. <laughs> oh, yeah, for, for sure. It, it's also it's also worth mentioning that when when uh, Kali brings up uh, words from the holy book, uh, Geld Moss seems to get a little bit uncomfortable for a moment. Hmm? Okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... Yeah, so you do this for the better half of the night. But eventually, give me a perception check, all of you. So, uh, with my plus one perception bonus, that comes out to a two. Ooh, oh. okay. <laughs> Let's get fun time math with Ben. What's one plus one? <laughs> oh. he's, just, he's just really throwing his back into this, like, fake candy that he's putting in these children's <laughs> the kids i don't think i think they'll figure it out eventually i'll get beaten up by like a kid mom <laughs> just any perception is being drowned out by the by the exclamations of the children yeah! um uh i got a 15 15 i got an 18 okay so Kali and moss you're the only ones to really notice something but as the night has gone on uh the amount of kids has, you know, reduced. A lot of them have finished their rounds or they're going back home. You don't know. But eventually you notice something peculiar that kind of sticks out to you. You thought you saw somebody in a zombie costume walking through kind of this, this plaza in front of your temple. Uh, now you're pretty sure that's a real zombie? Uh... With just, you know, rotten skin and tattered clothes and something on its chest and it's just kind of walking around. It hasn't bitten anybody yet. What would you all like to do? Uh, sir? 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 Uh, you, uh, I'm gonna like make my way over to him. Sure. Uh, sir, you wouldn't ha <laughs> You wouldn't happen to be a real zombie. <laughs> Look, you can't just be harassing random people out in the middle of the street. This is Halloween. People are in costumes. Shush it. And it's like... I, I go... I go up with her. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. You shouldn't do that. I, uh, I go. <laughs> I, I'm going up in order to make sure she doesn't start, like, a fight with them. Absolutely. Yeah. Sir, um... Oh, oh, you dropped your arm, uh, sir. <laughs> Look, this is just a very, very nicely done costume. Here you go, mister. I pick up the arm. Uh, it, Back to him. <laughs> uh, now that you're right near it, maybe it, it slowly, like, kind of turns to you, like, in a zombie motion. And you see it, it had something, like, like hanging off its chest. Oh, and, no. Um, um, like, it looks like a piece of parchment. And it's chewing the other end of it and just looking at you idly, just like, just is, chewing this paper. Can I grab the paper? Sure. Okay. You can grab the paper. Okay. Uh, I grab the paper. Okay. I open the paper. You, you 
take his paper and you um, open it up. You you tore out a little piece because he was chewing on it. <laughs> and I'm just like, there, there, just hold on a second. Yeah. Um, and on the note, there's something hastily scribbled. And it reads, help, there's vicious monsters everywhere. I'm stuck in... And then it bitten off there. You don't see the you rest of the You ate the note. best part. Is this like a messenger zombie? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it is. It's an abomination. Uh, it starts walking away. Okay, I'm gonna... Oh, wait. You forgot your candy. <laughs> Excuse me, mister. You forgot your candy. This is candy, and so I give him some candy. It, no, we're... It turns to you, like, questioningly. Zebo. Okay, so I hold out my hand, and I have some candy. I'm like, hey, forgot. There you go, candy. And then if he uh, if he doesn't take it, I'm like, oh, I forgot the character. And I put it, if he has clothes, I put it in the pocket. <laughs> there you go. That's commitment to performance. I ex- respect that. <laughs> As that is happening, Helmos is like making his way slowly like up behind and he just turns undead at the back of this thing's head. Uh, remind me how turn undead flows in 5e. De- it depends on the DC. So he has to make a wisdom save, I believe. Okay, so it does a wisdom saving throw? Uh, well, yeah, wisdom saving throw DC 14. It got a 17. Ah, oh, motherfucker. Oh, no. I really was wishing, like, like brains would just explode right in front of Zebo as he's trying to give this candy to this <laughs> zombie. <laughs> there you go. Proof he's not a zombie. Um, you <laughs> stuff this candy into its pocket, and it's just like, I think it was going to, like, slowly bite your hand but now it's kind of just like trying to bite its own pocket which means it's kind of like a dog chasing its own tail rocking in a circle just trying to get its candy see i feel like we should give it a name once we give it a name we keep it (laughs) well i mean if i know anything about paylor i don't think paylor is super stoked about undead creatures but he she kind of looks at it and it's trying to chase its own fucking pocket and it's like it is clearly stated in the sun father's hand yeah yeah there are no exceptions for the undead in paylor's writings that's true i so what happens is i'm looking at the other two and they're like do they really think this this halloween trick-or-treater is a zombie and then i'm like oh wait i get it now okay yeah the air quotes zombie sure Ooh, we have to get rid of it <laughs> It must be destroyed! And I, I'm locked and loaded. Shillelagh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think um, as Zebo's like admiring this thing, I just come down on it with my morning star. <laughs> and smash his head in. Do your attack. Okay. <laughs> that is uh, 11. Okay, you definitely hit it. Nice. Deal your damage. Okay. Oh, fuck. That's only, that's only for five points of damage. Wow. Oh no. Okay. So you, uh, I you just, you just kind of bonk it. it. This thing is still uh, standing. This is thing fine. Okay. All right. Healing word on what I believe is the, um, the, by the, just a Halloween trick or traitor. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Uh, he is going to get three hit points back. All right. And. That is as he, uh, I'm sure, gets hit by a 20 and uh, and loses six. <laughs> so it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> We're just beating this fucking guy senselessly in the middle of the street. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's just a Halloween trick or treater. <laughs> let, let me just roll for the crowd real quick. Okay, yeah, people are horrified. <laughs> there's some people screaming and there's some some concerned parents that like quickly get out of there. They're pointing your way and Nothing to see here, just Paylor Paylor problems. You got nothing to see here. Run! <laughs> Save yourselves! <laughs> <laughs> when you yell that, the zombie freaks out and starts running. Oh no! <laughs> In a really like weak meat like zombie run, no, so like you can that. easily catch up to this thing. But also, weren't we weren't we supposed to be saving someone? Wasn't there a message? <laughs> we we gotta do that later. We You're gotta busy shooting the messenger first. We gotta kill the messenger first. Priorities, <laughs> priorities. Uh, can I just finish him off by hitting him? Sure. 
I'm trying to smack him in the back of the head. Like a baseball <laughs> bat <laughs> to a baseball. <laughs> that is only a 10. You said you hit him. Okay, cool. Just end this poor creature. Oh, yes! Already. I got um, 11 points of damage to his fucking skull. Ooh, beautiful. Okay. Blammo! So you cronk this thing on the back of its head and just cave it in, and this thing just collapses. My character is horrified. <laughs> and now it's just oozing zombie liquid. See, Zebo, Zombie liquid. That... That's that a zombie, proves it. That's a zombie pinata. Still horrified. His his arm fell off. <laughs> yeah, Zebo. <laughs> How do you explain that? <laughs> and then I like pick it up and I'm like gesturing with it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you explain that, Zebo? <laughs> it's a freaking severed arm. <laughs> what did they teach you in Paylor school? It's just like goop flying off this arm as you're pointing and whipping it. Yeah, I'm like splatting Zebo a bit with Still it. Still horrified. <laughs> Absolutely, and the crowd agrees with Zebo and the screaming right now that you murdered somebody. It's fine, it's fine, it's zombie business. Get back to your homes, enjoy your candy. Praise Paylor. Praise be, <laughs> praise be. I like push the push the body a little bit to the side <laughs> so nobody steps on it. Uh, I, I'm actually gonna try and figure out. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of where this this thing came from. I'm gonna look at the letter again. So the letter said. Need help. It said, help? There's vicious monsters everywhere. I'm stuck in. And then it's cut off because the zombie was eating it. <gasps> All right. Can I check inside the zombie's mouth? You can try. I like I like go up to it and I like push open its mouth with the back of my morning star mace. And just like, eh. Zebo, do you want to grab something? There's something in its mouth. There's something in its mouth. Okay, yeah, I'll grab it. <laughs> so I go over... And I reach in and I actually pull out part of it. All right. And unfortunately, this is quite uh, soaked at this point. Um, Gross. I, well, see. okay, wait, 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 wait. Guys, Keldmoss asks for the, the two pieces. And I and I use mending. Oh, snap, using your big brain. Now, does mending restore the quality of an item? Or does it just put them back together? It just puts it back together, I believe. Okay. Um, uh, this spell repairs a single break or tear in an object you touch, such as a broken chain link, two halves of a broken key, a torn cloak, or a leaking wineskin. So with mending, you're able to get a bit more information, except where the ink has been, well, uh, licked away. off, I guess. And it now reads, help, there's vicious monsters everywhere. I'm stuck in the ma, and then it cuts off. Ma? Yeah, but M-A, and then it cuts off there. Ma. Hmm. The mall? Mausoleum? That seems more plausible than a mall. Is there a mausoleum? You do have a mausoleum in town. Does it seem long dead, the zombie? Um, it looks... Okay, it looks long dead, but maybe that it was raised at this very night. So it's freshly undead. It seems like this necromancer has made a grave error. I'm not going to acknowledge that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kali's just like, let's go. Yes, let us wipe his evil from the earth. Yep, I'm good for smashing. Let's smash. All righty. So the three of you, plus pets, <laughs> yes. head off to the uh, mausoleum in this town. And you would know that you have one uh, larger graveyard in this town, which is, you know, it's, it's not a huge town. So you have one and everybody buries their dead here. And there is a rather large rumor to be haunted mausoleum hmm. on it. You also notice something as you make your way through the streets of Mollyward, and that is that there are no more children anywhere. You notice some adults, but you don't notice any children. But you do notice a lot of the adults calling out the children's names and looking for them. Uh. And some are looking more panicked than others. Oh. We, uh, we better stop and ask about this. This seems more pressing than the necromancer. Uh, there are parents everywhere, so the you guys um, go and approach, let's say it's like a, a younger couple, and they're calling out two different names of their children, and they look fairly panicked, they don't know what to do, and actually when they see you approach, they look almost relieved and run right up to you. Oh, oh, cler you're clerics of Palo, right? Uh, yes. yes. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Oh, that's that, that, that's wonderful. Can you help us find our children? Yes. What happened? When was the last that you saw well, them? They were just out trick-or-treating. 
Were they dressed up as anything? Uh, yes, yes. They were dressed up as a... Uh, one was dressed as a skeleton and one as a minotaur. We put a lot of effort in those costumes. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep our eyes out. We're, we're looking around. Uh, well, don't worry. We'll, we'll, and I'll, I kind of are, like, reassuring to them. I'm like, oh, we'll find them. Don't worry. We're right on the case. We'll, uh, they're probably just right around the corner. And, uh, you know, kids get lost all the time. Especially on these kinds of nights. So you mustn't, mustn't worry and, uh... Good, good costume choices. Those are good, good costume choices. Um, uh, thank you, but, but please return our case. Except the skeleton, which is an unholy design. Yeah, that's a little. It's in poor taste, <laughs> but uh... I, I am going to discuss with the group. So I have a spell, uh, Skywrite, which lets me write words in the sky. Um, and I don't know if there's a moon out because I could put an emergency like broadcast of like stay indoors, don't go outside. Yeah, there's a moon out, so you're able to do that. It's a clear, starry night. Okay, so I could, I don't know how many people could see it, but I could do a um, an emergency broadcast of, like, I throw a spell out. Uh, there's been an emergency. Um, clerics are looking into it. Stay indoors. Okay, but before you do that, sh- shouldn't we direct all of the parents whose children have gone missing to meet in a central location? Oh, okay, meet at, uh, like, town hall or something like that? Also put a little smiley face on it. Because you don't want to be aggressive. <laughs> you want people to look at it and not be panicked. So put a little, little smile of face on it. And make little sun lines outside of it so they know it's from us. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Put the little sun lines outside the, the, the little smile and uh, so people won't panic. Should we take a meeting maybe on this? Like, I, I have some design notes. <laughs> <laughs> Moss, we have talked about this. We can't go into this right now. <laughs> I know you really want to be a graphic designer, but we can't do this right now. <laughs> I just feel like, you know, it could use some plant forms or, I don't know, something that evoke, evokes nature and, uh, well, whatever. And different font styles. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to um, emergency broadcast, like, I'm trying to remember. It's like we want people to go to a town hall, end of trick-or-treating, don't be outside alone. And um, what was the last thing? Smiley face. And then smiley face. Smiley face with the sun. You cannot forget the <laughs> nice. smiley face. You write that in the sky, and you see people in the street start to take notice of it. And uh, some are a bit worried, but now they kind of have confirmation that indeed there's something going on. And most people heed your advice and start to head home and kind of comforting their spouses and such. And then you notice something else appearing in the sky. What kind of color would your writing be? Uh, Mine would probably be like sparkly green. (laughs) Sparkly green writing, all right. And then you notice a sparkly, a bit less sparkly red writing appear near your writing in the sky. Uh. And uh, which reads, don't worry about a thing. Uh, The real clerics are on the job. Signed, Clerics of Loth. Uh, hey! All right, using up another Skyrite, motherfucker. They didn't even put a smiley face on it! <laughs> they put a Mr. Yuck Yuck at the end. Ah, <laughs> oh, those son of a bitches! Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> Taking uh, up our town! <laughs> All right, what's the next Skyrite gonna be? Because we can't let them get the last word. <laughs> Zebo, Zebo, save your spells. We gotta, we gotta updo these guys. No no, 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 we're not doing this right now. We need to upshow these Lolf followers. What level is skywriting? A skywrite is second level. Oh lord. <laughs> <laughs> we are using this to the best of our abilities. <laughs> I, I will say. Uh, this is the only time it's ever actually helped because every other time I've used it is just to screw with people. I'm like, emergency broadcast, nothing's happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now we have a competitor. Dirty, rotten, lost. <laughs> <laughs> and I spit on the ground. <laughs> uh, so we got to find these kids in the name of Paylor. All right, and you all keep making your way towards the mausoleum, which takes you about five or ten minutes, but soon after, you do find the graveyard, which looks as spooky and haunted as ever. In fact, it is even a little bit decorated on the front fence. Some people have put on some pumpkins or set up some candles. This is in such poor taste. (laughs) But despite the clear sky, you swear there's a lightning strike over the mausoleum. 
Oh, that's good. And a swarm of bats flies your way and over your head. Mm. <laughs> Cue Phantom of the Opera music. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like the decor. As you swing open the gate, you notice there's actually quite a bit of candy on the floor here. Hey, who left all this here? I'm going to grab some. Yeah, it's perfectly good candy. Yeah, it's perfectly good candy. You guys want some? Or no? Actually, no. Might be poisoned. So just to confirm, and I know that this may take a while, uh, but we're not going to meet with them at the center of town in order to find out any commonalities between the... Just, just double-checking. All right, that's a thing. Uh... <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> and then you hear a voice behind you go, <clears throat> Well, 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 look who turned up at the graveyard stealing kids' candies. I turn. You see a squad of three clerics of Loth, all in dark, like, black armor with like red trim on it like they look evil as shit do they look punk they look a little bit punk and they got like arms crossed you edgelord dicks what were you doing up in the All sky right. <laughs> that was our turn gonna, we'll solve this i'm not gonna lie they have style i'm actually like genuinely impressed like they, it's coordinated <laughs> they all got the thing it's the night you know it's like it's edgy like i mean man it's a graveyard. They got the red trim. Like the mystique. There was even a lightning. I don't even know how they did that. Yeah, I suppose it was well timed. <laughs> Damn right we got style, unlike you bunch of happy sunshines. Well, at least our sunshine will be able to solve this goddamn mystery. What are you even doing here? This is not a town for you to be in. Well, unlike you all, we're actually all out and about solving this case. We don't actually think that you really, uh,. You know, you're always just prancing about, pale or this, pale or that. It's, you know, don't really get anything done. Just go go home. What, are you gonna, you gonna solve this mystery and sacrifice all the kids to your goddess? If I feel like it, I might. But first of all, we're gonna go save those kids. You know, I don't think you understand the, the purpose of saving children <laughs> if you're gonna sacrifice them at the end. Yeah, it seems counterproductive. Look, look, we know, we know a thing or two about saving children and raising children, but um, <laughs> that's really none of your concern. I feel like we need to... Is that a to... necromancy pun? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the necromancy pun got me. Yeah, a bunch of pansies, just leave it to the three of us. Just go home. We've already got a pretty solid lead. We had think it was a monster out in the forest that took them all so and the kind of like leader in the middle just like jabs him and's like don't fucking tell them that no please tell us more some kind of monster huh mm. in the forest not really no nothing at all i'm more curious why are the three of you creeping in the graveyard with uh you know stealing kids candies and stuff that's pretty evil, if I might say so myself. Uh, excuse me, but this is per perfectly fine candy on the ground, and I thought I would save it for the kids when eventually we find them. And she's, like, putting away one that's half-opened into a pocket. <laughs> Unless you want some. You may notice one of the henchmen is already, like eating some from the ground. <laughs> Let's make him the silent number three for now. <laughs> that's, um, that's my ground candy. And um, leader guy speaks up, whatever. I don't have time for you losers. We're going to go out and we're going to save those kids. And then we're going to get a little more recognition for the Church of Loth around here. Aw, oh, not if I can help it. I would really love it if you could just outline on any axis... Why, Loth is a superior choice. Loth is superior in every axis. She's a spider we have, woman. We've got missing kids, and they're probably dead. <laughs> exactly, and here you are wasting time trying to talk down on the church of Loth. We're just trying to save some kids. You literally wasted a spell slot to talk us down in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nothing. That's nothing they would do. Well, we can't have let you have all the spotlight now, can we? We're gonna be out and about now. You guys, you kids have fun playing in your graveyard with your, your candy. And we're gonna go be some real heroes. Do they walk past? No, actually, well, they walk past the mausoleum. They walk past you, but they don't walk into the graveyard. They just walk out. Yeah, all right, you guys keep walking. Yeah, whatever. You're back alone. God, I hate those guys. I hate them and their fucking cat. Okay, I have, I have an idea also in terms of uh, so they're kidnapping kids. 
Uh, so I think I might use disguise oh my God. Are you gonna on myself. <laughs> You're like, are you turning into a kid? Yes, and then not oh only that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have like the little sailor outfit with like oh a big my. lollipop or something. <laughs> <laughs> with, like, the... <laughs> Zebo, have you ever seen a child? <laughs> there, oh, those people that are about the same size as me. I mean, it only works because today pe- uh, kids are dressing up, so that's the only reason that you're able to get away with the little sailor outfit <laughs> and the lollipop. I don't know what you're talking about, Lick Lick. <laughs> I like it. It reminds me of my youth. And then, like, I, I, I go away from the group, and it's like, oh, I hope I don't get lost. I'm a small child, and I can't. Uh, you walk around this graveyard, helpless, licking your lollipop, but nothing happens to you. All right, mausoleum time. It's like, I'm like, la, 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 I'm just going around, and then when nothing happens, I'm like, Fine, fuckers. <laughs> Should we? I mean, I know the mausoleum's right there, and it makes sense for us to go there since, you know, the crackling, spooky ambiance. You look over at it, and lightning strikes behind it. Da-da-da. Yeah, with all <laughs> that. But, uh,. If there's a monster in the forest, should we check out the forest or should we just go straight to the muscle lame? They were probably lying. Everything that a follower of Loth says is a lie. Well, yes, that is true. However, the uh, leader did not want the other guy talking about it. It was all a deception. Oh, sweet Carly. Somehow I wonder how you've made it this far. <laughs> with my morning star, that's how far I've gotten with it. That is a good point. <laughs> Yes, I like, <laughs> like gesture in my hand men- menacingly with it. Yeah, he looks He looks at your, like, jacked arm. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. You too, we gotta get going. You're like, there's people missing. Yeah, I missing suppose. Missing children. All right. Maybe we should, I uh, like, bend down and pick up Zebo. Yep, no, I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be away from you guys. You're the parents, and I gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> but what if we do this? And she, like... She, like, holds you out, and she's like, looky here, fresh kid. I, I don't think, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> Why not? Okay, so, so, um, how long has it been between the last mission that we, that we played, uh, with the cat and now? Maybe, like, let's, um. Well, if you're doing holiday Well, wise. true, if it's Halloween rotation, it was between Christmas and the next Halloween, so. So, like, real so, time. Yeah. Okay, so would it be fair to say that Bagel has had some training in the intermediary period? Absolutely. So I think, uh, I'm trying to think how Gildmoss would even say it, but he basically says like, you take Bagel, and if anything bad happens, all right, you, you ride him back to us like the wind. Okay. All right, so I guess we're splitting up. Yes. Slightly, yes. <laughs> How are you guys splitting up? We're letting Zebo kind of be the bait. Okay. Yes. How? Okay. So the layout of the town, are the woods like behind the mausoleum? Mm. It's kind of in the middle of the town. There's houses on all sides okay. of it. Of the mausoleum or the Oh, forest? sorry. Of the, of the graveyard, which the mausoleum is in. <laughs> okay. So the, how long would it take to get from the graveyard to the forest? Um, it's probably about, like, half hour walk. Fuck. That is so far. We could, we could just go to the mausoleum and see what we see there. Yeah, let's try it. Let's go to the mausoleum. And, um, but still, the little sailor suit get, get up is probably a good call. <laughs> good fan <laughs> <Yeah>. art. <laughs> we'll re-engage this plan later if, if the mausoleum doesn't pan out. So, the group approaches the mausoleum. The door is slightly ajar, and inside you can hear the echoes of many different kinds of monsters and creatures. Ah? Uh-huh. I don't think a normal mausoleum has that, right? Uh, no. No, it does not. All right, well, prepare yourselves. And I ready myself with my morning star mace and just kind of hold it mm-hmm. and start to walk forward. Okay. So you open the door? Yep. Okay. As... You all pass through the door. You feel like you walked through a spell. Oh, good. But it doesn't have any effect on you, and it doesn't do anything. But you just felt a little bit of, like, like walking through a force field, kind of. I immediately, like, hokey pokey, like, just step right back out. I turn and I look at Moss. 
Yeah, I know. It's spooky spell stuff. I was just checking that we could leave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I thought you got spooked. No. You have no solid barrier, so you can leave freely. Good. Okay, well, I guess. And then I, uh, I go back in. All right. So obviously some hokey pokey spookums is going on here. So keep your guard up. Yeah. And you just hear like so many different monster sounds coming from a long staircase leading down into the ground in this mausoleum. Mm. You hear noises you don't even recognize. So <laughs> before, just before um, we, we go too much deeper, uh, Gelmas like moves forward a little bit with a, with a white, piece of cloth and and he says bagel come come and he rubs the white cloth on bagel and then he rubs the white cloth on his on his rat familiar <laughs> and he and he says golly or do either of you want some protection yeah L- white cloth sounds good okay yeah sure i'll take some protection i can only do one of you <laughs> oh uh then do zebo Okay, <laughs> he rubs he rubs the top of your head. Uh, okay, you have an additional five HP, I believe. All right, cool. And so your maximum hit points and current hit points increase by five for the next eight hours. Nice. Right. That's a cool. rad spell. Awesome. I feel uh, bounce in my step now. Yep. <laughs> well, it's gonna make the difference between my rat being instantly killed and not. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Um, I don't know if your rat already has this, but I could give your rat blessings of the trickster, giving him advantage on dex or um, stealth checks. Um, I think I, I, I may, might be the one who needs that. Okay, never mind. I put it on play. I start praying. Play, Lord, blessings be upon your. <laughs> <laughs> we all just like stand and wait while you do that. There's no urgency with clerics. It's all fucking ritual. We've got like incense and stuff. <laughs> 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 we all smell really good. We smell like a freaking like bath bomb store. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and I think of just like we're we're standing back watching this ritual, and then Kali's just like to Moss. It's like so, rat familiar. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you remember him? Yeah. He he gave us a ride. It's it's young, Jan Broadbottom. Yeah, yum. God, I hope I don't accidentally crush you when I'm fighting. <laughs> Be quick, little buddy, because my feet are yeah, not. Th- I mean, probably the familiar just looks at you completely blankly because it is in no way really a, a normal living creature. It's a mindless, it's a mindless fae. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at him and I'm like, yeah, you got it. You're fine. <laughs> Okay, so you head to the bottom of the staircase, and there is a 90-degree corner. This is all, like, carved into stone, and the walls have been smoothed, but um, looks a bit cavernous nonetheless. And you peek around this corner, and you spot a skeleton and a minotaur. And they're just kind of bumbling around, like, they might even be sometimes slapping each other. Or just like walking into a wall. It's the children. That's that's actually what I my th- first thought too was that it might be. Oh yeah, the minotaur and the skeleton. Wait, hmm. do they look like a real minotaur and a real skeleton? Yes, this is a full size minotaur and a skeleton. So in this moment, the horror of what we did in the streets strikes him. Uh oh. I think we may have killed a boy. Ooh. <laughs> I was Ooh. actually right about something. <laughs> Oh, 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 Lord. Every instinct told me what we were doing was right. And, like, look up to the ceiling, and I'm like, Paylor, Paylor, forgive me. I am I was following the book, and I knew I should have given him a name, but I smashed his skull in instead, and... Don't you... Maybe we... Don't mm, you dare... Blame the texts for this. It was our no. own short-sightedness. Yeah. <laughs> he just, we have to save the children. Let's <laughs> let's be let's be perfectly frank. Like the texts can sometimes. I mean, you know, like they're really they're kind of really preachy. <laughs> I slap you with the book. 
<laughs> and then I pull out I pull out my other like weird fringe subset. Like I, because Moss is from part of a different denomination than I think you two are. <laughs> and he goes, "Which book?" Let's just. I will repent for this later because we need to save these kids now. Yeah, and Paylor's not picking up the phone right now. You don't get a response. Oh my! God. <laughs> He's not on the line. So my, uh, so what I would actually try to do is I'm going to try and see if we, if they're like still the kids inside or not. So I'm going to see if I can go up to them and be like, hey, how's, like, uh, do they, and I'm going to see if they, like, attack me or not. The Minotaur turns and notices you. I'm just a little child still. And charges at you. Oh, okay. Uh, Yeah, so it is going to, it's literally charging at you horns down, but it looks rather uncoordinated and tries to hit you with a... That's still got a 20. Okay, that is definitely a hit because my AC is an 11 because armor is for nerds. (laughs) I don't have armor. I have style. (laughs) Yeah, your style will, you know, stop the horns from goring you in your guts. Yeah, this thing makes impact with you, goring you, dealing you 14 points of piercing damage. Oh my god. Let's see. And after it makes impact with you, it loses its balance and just kind of falls and tumbles and lands on its back. Um, I I like leap at it and grasp its back with both hands mm-hmm. and cast Lesser Restoration. Okay. You touch one creature that and can end either one disease uh, or one condition afflicting it. Uh, the condition can be blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. I, I my guess is that it also might work on this sort of thing. I hope it does. We'll, we'll attempt and try, because that's the highest thing we have, because I think there's, um, I don't think we have like Dispel Magic, and then there's also Remove Curse, which I'm pretty sure we don't have, so. Even if it doesn't work, at least we find out some info. Yeah, okay, you cast the spell, but it does not work. Oh no. It was worth a try. Yeah, good, good try, Moss. Oh, I'm getting tired. The Minotaur that's on the <laughs> ground, it's just kind of holding its head. Mm. How's the skeleton looking? The skeleton is walking over towards you. Mm. All right, Skelly. Chill right there. Uh, I want to throw candy at it. Okay. Yeah. I just like grab into my pocket and just go like, hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go for the candy. Oh, that's so smart. It goes for the candy. Yes. <laughs> it's just like reaching for it and like, oh, ah. and then just walks over and goes to grab it. And it manages eventually to unwrap it and then like try to eat it, but it just kind of falls through its skull. And now it's just flailing angrily. <laughs> uh, all right. I kind of like the, the minotaur is on the ground, right? Yeah, the minotaur is holding its head. Aw. I'm going to go up to it and give it a piece of candy. Okay. Here you go. We're buddy. It's all right. You give it a piece of candy and uh, it reluctantly takes it. So it sits up and uh, just sits against like the side of the hallway or something and eats its candy and pouts. I knew taking this candy was a good idea. All right, you guys stay there. There must be some kind of source. If there, if we're in a magical barrier. Maybe we, we can lure them outside and it once they go through the barrier, they'll... We should travel deeper and try to figure out the source and destroy it, I think. And then you hear an echo coming from deeper within saying, hey! Yeah, I think we gotta go in. Not the face! Yeah, I start running. You charge down the hallway, uh, charging around another couple twists and turns here and there, and come to a larger room, which has a few different um, kind of sarcophagi set up. Well, it's a mausoleum after all. And you see a robed figure in the corner with a large creature kind of towering over it. It looked like it just finished punching it, and you are facing the back of a troll which has not noticed you yet. Hmm. And the robe figure is the one screaming for help. Why don't we do initiatives before we start this one? Okay. Oh, great. I got a natural one. <laughs> eight. Five. All right. I also got an eight. Who would like to go first? Uh, you can go first. Okay. Okay. Well, Kali, you go first. All this right. This troll has not noticed you, and there's a robed figure just kind of crumpled and scared on the ground in front of this troll. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And the setup is there's a bunch of uh, sarcophagi or whatever. <laughs> there's sarcophagi throughout the room, <laughs> and they are in like a corner of the room. Okay. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run around to the opposite side of like if they're in a corner, I'm going to go to the the opposite corner. Okay. Like just facing them directly diagonally. Right. Um, behind one of the sarcophagi, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to just yell at it and be like, "Hey, big troll guy!" I got a O. Henry bar! And uh, it definitely notices you and turns around and looks at you. Mm-hmm. And, well, it's not its turn, so but it, it notices. Uh, Zebo. Uh, hey, we know that you're in a tough spot. We know that you're probably okay. There's someone in there. It's fine. We're here to help, I say to the troll. And also you. We're probably going to help you, mm-hmm. unless you're bad, in which case we're not helping you. <laughs> then we will smash your face <laughs> if you are evil. Yes, there will be many face smashes. Uh, involved if you're uh, the one doing this. When you say that, it looks like almost like you're egging it on, and the troll kind of like cracks its knuckles and is ready to get this started. Okay, I didn't want to smash your face, but... <laughs> Moss? Uh, I guess, I, I mean, Moss, Moss just yells out, Attack to stun! She'll, and shillelaghs, and as a... As a and basically prepares an action to attack the troll if it seems like a real troll as opposed to another like bumbling kid. Give me an inside check. Sure. Well, I guess, yeah, it's straight into its turn. Uh, that is not good. That is a nine. Hmm. You're not able to distinguish it at this time. It could be either or. He's going to err on the side of caution. And, well, it is the troll's turn, and it accepts the challenge. Let's see if it goes for, like, who it goes for. The troll accepts the challenge and comes stomping towards Zebo. Okay, that's fine. I'm just a little child! <laughs> <laughs> it's almost walking with a little bit of swagger. Steps in front of you and just punches you in the face. At least that's what it tries to. It tries to do. Beat an AC of 11. Oh, it might just barely beat it with a 15. <laughs> and just clocks you in the face. Okay. Hard. Dealing you 12 points of damage. Mm. <laughs> I could take one of those every day. <laughs> Blood comes out. <laughs> and uh, so uh, let me let me just tell you. So that was 12. Okay. Well then. Uh, I'm at two hit points. So I would be at negative three if I did not get um, a plus five. The protect or whatever? Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. (laughs) And after punching you, it kind of shakes out its fist and is like laughing. Like, I don't know how a troll laughing would sound, but it's just kind of (laughs) laughing. (laughs) Oh god. I don't think this is a kid. I cough and one of my teeth falls out and then I have a big black eye. Um, that is the entire side of my face. <laughs> I feel I feel like every time we play these characters, Zebo always gets smashed in the face. <laughs> Multiple face smashings. He does. <laughs> he just has this appeal of smashing in his face. <laughs> I'm going to roll concentration on the uh, disguise. And I failed, so I am now back to my normal uh, Zebo. Okay. Oh, the little sailor hat was growing on me. So you looked exactly like the kid from Mad Magazine for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Kali, we're back to you. Mm. Zebo's been clocked in the face and he looks bad. Yeah, yeah. So this thing is how far away from Because uh, I was in the corner. It's only about 15 feet. 15 so feet? It's not that big of a room. Okay. But I have... Sarcophagus is a <laughs> sarcophagi. A sarcophagus. Vampire is between me <laughs> and this thing. I think I see Zebo just getting clocked and go, oh, all right, I guess we're doing this. I want to like, like weave my way through the vampire cases, and I'm going to take my <laughs> Morning Star and slam it in the back of his leg, like the back of his knee, mm-hmm. so that he can crumple. Okay. Uh, 11. Uh, no. No! <laughs> you don't even touch it. Oh, no. You completely miss the leg. Oh! Uh, <laughs> I, like, I I do this thing where I, like, I swing and I spin and I, I spin around and go, what the I missed? Okay, all right. <laughs> Just don't get hit again, Zebo. <laughs> don't worry. I don't make the same mistake twice. Three times. I got hit twice. Three times, I don't. <laughs> uh, Zebo, it's your turn. Okay, Zebo 
Ian's turn. I am going to cast um, Mirror Image, and I'm going to generate, or I'm going to generate three other Zebos. So there's four of us now. That's a lot of Zebos. And I'm like, oh, oh, he can't hit me. Oh, do you think you can hit me? Oh. And so uh, that's my turn. Okay, Geldmoss. Uh, my familiar uh, is going to fly in, or not fly in, I'm used to having an owl. Uh, the rat is just gonna like run over to the, <laughs> run over to the troll and start like scampering around on its belly um, and assist me. And so I am going to make a, okay, that is a 25. Just roll to see if there's a crit. As he's doing that, uh, Feldmoss like runs in um, and tries to like run through the troll's legs and slam one of its shins as hard as, it, as he can with his uh, shillelagh. Um, and he definitely hits with a 25. Jesus. Yep. Um, or sorry, doing... Paylor. <laughs> Paylor, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but doesn't do, doesn't do a lot of damage. He does four damage on that, on that first mm-hmm. one. Um, and then just as, just as it seems like it's all done, he, he just yells, Bagel attack! <laughs> um, and my basset hound rolls a crit. Oh my god! Nice. Yeah. Bagel is the MVP of this group. Yes. Okay. So that is uh, Bagel does eleven damage. Damn, Bagel. Damn. So as as I come through, I hit I hit the shin. Bagel comes up behind me, jumps off my shield, grabs onto the jewels. I grab him by the legs and I pull him down. All right. So. You guys tag team this troll, and uh, the troll falls to the ground and uh, just starts kind of like flailing and almost sounds like it's um, uh, whimpering. A a kid? (laughs) Oh no. I do have the full O. Henry bar. Yeah. And uh, it's just kind of the troll, as big as it is, it's just trying to kind of curl up a little bit and it's like scared of you. It's okay. (laughs) And I'm like, we're here. And I try and speak softly to him. As you're spitting up blood and teeth. <laughs> <laughs> From all four, all four of my, or all three of my duplicates spit up blood as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So as soon as it seems like he's, he's reverting back to being a kid, uh, I'm going to healing word him. Okay. Okay. And it regains 10 on its turn anyway, so it'll be back to full health. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Now we're going to go over to the the guy in the robes and it'd be like, hey. Yeah, the guy in the robes stands up and is surprisingly tall at probably around eight feet tall. Whoa. Well, uh, now you guys know how I feel. (laughs) What do you mean? I'm four feet tall. I'm the only one that's having an existential crisis here. (laughs) And uh, it, it stands up. It has like these long, tattered, flowing robes. And you see that it's actually uh, skeletal in nature. It doesn't have any skin. Uh, and like dusts off its robe, looks at you guys and says, Well, finally, you made it. I thought I was going to die down here. Uh, hello. It's Slender Man. What? <laughs> uh, who, who are you? What, uh, what do you seem to be doing in this place filled with monsters? I'm Lord Dreadbone. Surely you must have heard of my epic, evil, foul deeds throughout the years. Uh... Nope. And even if I have heard of him, I pretend like I don't. Okay. Oh my god. Points for Lord Dreadbone as a name. That's so good. Have we ever heard of him? <laughs> you may have heard rumors of like a um, of an evil creature in this town, but you've never been able to confirm it. Hey! He says, and uh, this here is my magnificent lair. Which unfortunately has been overrun by a bunch of freaking children. But you, uh, I assume you received my note? Wait. Okay, about, about that note. Was that a child? What? God, no. These children are out of control. I couldn't tell it to go get something. That was a real zombie. Oh, oh thank Paylor. Paylor. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> And my character's just like, wait a second, it was a zombie? It was just a stupid zombie. What's with all of you? Oh my god. Feldmoss <laughs> uh. is going to spend most of the rest of this encounter weeping, 
hugging whoever's near it. <laughs> it's all right, Moss. We we didn't kill a kid today. Not today. Oh, thank God. <laughs> or thank Paylor. <laughs> What's this about killing children? No, we're not gonna. We're I not thought kill- I was evil. No, we're not killing children. Uh, first of all, great. So no, you're here to save me, right? Well, I mean. What's your get up? What's your deal? I mean, you said you're evil. We don't exactly help evil people. So, what, are you a necromancer? Well, wait. Wait now, a minute. I thought Paylor's supposed to help people in need, right? Yes. Yeah. And I'm in need. My lair has been overrun by monstrous children, and I need your help. Wait, so you didn't cause this? I may or may not. <laughs> Wait, what? Did you cause this? Because this, that determines if I smashed your face right now or uh, not. Uh, I mean, hey, hey now. I've been smashed in their face enough tonight. <laughs> Listen, it's, it, it's just a prank, all right? It's a prank gone wrong. I was tired of these stupid children coming, knocking on my freaking doors, demanding candy. Like, who does that? So I just decided to have some fun with them and turn their, you know, turn them into whatever costumes they're wearing when they step inside. That was a bit problematic when they started turning into, you know, trolls and bayheers and whatnot, so, um... Yeah, you think? And, uh, I kind of, sort of, maybe got separated from my mega-awesome staff, which I need back to undo the spell, so... Help. Uh... I mean... I want to punch him in the face. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, let me pull up my lich stats here. <laughs> With a 20. Oh, yeah, you hit that. <laughs> Unnatural, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, I punch him in the face. It's nothing like, I'm not trying to kill him no, or anything. I just, yeah. I just like, bam! <laughs> oh, God, my face. Why would you do that? Oh, uh, I only do five points of damage to his face. Yeah. Well, that's for changing kids into monsters. It was funny. It was not funny. Okay, it was a little bit funny. <laughs> this guy gets it. Yeah. Zero! You can be my next minion. I thought I killed a boy. <laughs> I, I don't think, maybe not minion, but like, I mean, we could work something out. Like, that sounds reasonable. Like, I mean, like, do you have anyth- anything else, like, after this is over? Like, do you have any work or missions to do? Like, yeah, I can see something like that happening. I'm assuming his health care is not great, so I wouldn't take it. Uh, we have dental. <laughs> <laughs> dental, you say. Good God. I think I, I think Zebo is like, if if my character is like a weird backwoods hippie religious person, Zebo is like a televangelist. <laughs> who doesn't totally my, believe in uh, it <laughs> my back also part of my my thing is that i just joined with the ter- church at convenience like oh you get to sleep here and my character is very jaded about the whole light of paylor okay light of paylor woo you know and so he's more of kind of like and so whenever you guys are preaching he's the guy who's like ah oh, again like more preaching <laughs> didn't we just do this yesterday <laughs> didn't we preach yesterday <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So you want us to find your staff. You're going to accompany me into my amazing lair, and we're going to go get my staff back. So then we can reverse all the kids. Yes, I want them out of my place. They shit everywhere. I mean, there's really not potty trained. I mean, the Minotaur... <laughs> Have you ever seen a Minotaur shit? Who's going to clean it? <laughs> I thought you had minions. Well, I do. And hey, offer stands. We've got dental and it looks like you need it. So, are we ready to get this amazing plan on the road or what? Uh, can we sidebar for a second? <laughs> Lord Redbone is not a patient lich, so you better make it quick. Well, you're obviously powerless if you need help from us. <laughs> <laughs> you get five minutes. Thank you. Ouch, that kind of hurt, Moss. <laughs> We go out into the hallway like it's fucking Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think about his pitch for a minute. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, look, I think everything about this uh, little topsy turvy. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard of a good lich. <laughs> I haven't t- either, but he does have a point where we need to find and reverse this, right? Yeah, we do. Ne- we do need his help to, you know, I don't, we can't dispel, we already tried lesser restoration and that doesn't work. And I think that's the, uh, that was kind of our go-to. Well, 
That's, that's our go-to, but we all come from various sects of the church. We could bring them back to some of the more powerful clerics' monasteries. But that could take forever. If we have a solution right now, we need to... Yes, well, we took a shortcut with the zombie, and we nearly killed a child. But we didn't, did we? But I... <laughs> so, my thinking is that we go, we find this staff, We reverse it, and then we can punch the lich in the face as much as we want. So, really, it's a win-win. We have now the lich that we can deal with, but right now we kind of need to play nice. That sounds good. Does not mean we are leaving any kind of, like, like we are still pale or we are still killing evil creatures, but we also need to help these kids no matter what. We do need to help these children. But perhaps the way to help them is is less straightforward than helping a lich. <laughs> you know, Moss, I understand. I, I feel like every time <laughs> I hang out with you guys, we help something awful. <laughs> but doesn't it always turn out great at the end? We helped Lolth's cat. Yeah, well, we also killed a really evil doer in it, too, so... Okay, look, you guys... It's, the answer's pretty simple. Like, if we don't solve it right now, those other law cleric assholes, they're gonna solve it before us. We can't let them win. Oh, God, you're right. Wait, we have a bigger problem. The Lolf clerics went out into the woods, if I remember correctly, after the monsters. They're going to be hunting these children. That's why we have to reverse it as quick as possible. But also... I think it only happens inside the monastery. I don't think it's outside. They said they saw monsters in the woods. That may be something completely different, Moss. We gotta be careful with that then. Okay. All right. TikTok minions. Hey, we haven't ex- we haven't accepted it yet. We're not minions exactly, not, but we will be in a few seconds. <laughs> he also <laughs> did offer dental. And I'm kind of, honestly, we need it. I wasn't going to say anything, but we all need it. I mean, your face desperately needs some teeth exactly. in it. Exactly. I just lost a tooth. That is that is true. I, I say we give him a counter offer that if we do this for him, bring him his staff, that he must, when he honors the deal, go to the Shadowfell or some such place, somewhere where he won't trouble these good townsfolk again. All right. Okay, cool. Yeah. It like, seems don't... crazy for a lich to live in the middle of a town. <laughs> yeah, well, the world we live in is quite crazy and quite strange. I mean, I have an O'Henry bar. I don't know how that works. <laughs> With trademarks and all. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this one off is sponsored by O'Henry. <laughs> <laughs> we are not sponsored by O'Henry. <laughs> all right. Well, let's just keep our guard up. Okay, so we're in agreement. Yep. Yep, yep. Okay. Okay, all right, we're your minions now. No, No, we didn't sign the contract. We're not doing the dental. Uh, But we do have a counteroffer. What? What's your counteroffer? We would like it if you would go to a different plane of existence once you get your staff back. Nah. Why would I do that? It's kind of nice here. You live in the middle of a town. You won't be bothered in the shadow fan. Well, I don't want to be bothered by anybody, but it wasn't me who came up to my door demanding candy. Who does that? Normal children. Exactly. They're awful. <laughs> How about another counter offer? If we do this, we put up a bigger fence around the cemetery and you don't let children in here. We're not from the town. Okay, well, we could talk to the town and see if we, if we could work that out and just, just not have them go to the mausoleum. I'm pretty sure the, chil- the townsfolk will be happy not to go to the mausoleum. Wonderful! Oh, so l- let me get this straight. We're, g- <laughs> we're going to help Lord Treadbones get back his staff. I say we, I say we just hunt down the loaf clerics. <laughs> <laughs> with the staff? No, with our, our just might. Let our faith be the strength in our arms. Well, they're probably looking for the same thing we're looking for. (laughs) Moss, Moss, Moss. Yes? I see your predicament and your moral crisis is going on. Yes? But every moment that we spend here trying to figure this out, 
on where exactly we are on the spectrum of helping a lich or not, those fucker lol followers are probably closer to that staff where they could probably use it for the evilest of deeds in which I think they might sacrifice all these children. And I can't stand that. Or worse, they'll save all the children and everyone will like them. <laughs> That's terrible. Where precisely is the staff, Lord Dreadbone? In the inner sanctum, of course. Which is where? The deepest room in the in the lair. All right. So then we just have to make our way through the lair. That's right. We will make our way down. You will uh, protect me from any monsters and children. And uh, then we will uh, get my staff back. And I can undo this hell. How do we know we can trust you? Yeah, how can we know that we can trust you? You need some kind of reassurance for us. You have to understand we're going against everything Paylor's taught us, which is not just smiting your ass right now. But Lord Dreadbone is always trustworthy. Hmm. I did send you my one of my finest zombies. Has a point there. Hmm. Lord Dreadbone's always sticks to his word. Why would I lie? This is my master plan. We've okay, we've heard we've heard of him a little bit. Is that a real thing? You've heard about some kind of evil creature being in this town, and people like to tell it as around like the tavern or you know to scare children at night. But there's no major stories of people actually going missing or being abducted or a literal lich existing in this area. Like there's no actual evil deeds that have taken part. From what you've heard, if he's seriously been here, he's been keeping to himself. I would like to roll an insight to see if he's trustworthy. Sure. Uh, thirteen. That's not. Big bass. Let me try. Oh, fuck. Natural 20, baby. I know you can't really crit those things, but still. Um, you think he's telling the truth? I mean, to be honest, I kind of like turned to these guys and I said, look, in, in like a hushed voice, I said, look, I know he's a lich, but I think he's missing a couple, you know, screws in the head if you'd like to say that. But I know. Whispering in front of your lord and master is rude. Shasha, here, have an old Henry. Uh, so what I'm saying is that this guy, he may be a lich, but right now, at this moment, he's kind of harmless. Other than turning kids into monsters and being a dumbass about it. <coughs> you mean causing this entire situation? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's obviously, uh, not well versed in his craft. Hmm. So, why don't we go through get this staff, reverse it, and then we can properly deal with this lich. Um, now, <laughs> this might this might be offensive of Helmos to, like, assume this, but he switches to Undercommon and speaks with Kali and basically says, like, we have this guy's location now. We know what he is. Mm -hmm. And after this is done... We confer with the main branch. Good good choice, Moss. Lord Dreadbone leans into your guys' huddles like, What are you talking about? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, can she ride that insight to see whether or not he speaks under common? I am just going to go out on a limb and assume that he probably does. Why don't we get going? Great. The master plan continues. Lord Dreadbone and his minions will reclaim the staff. Yeah. We never said we never said we were your minions. Onward, minions! Okay, let's go. I have to say, like as a player, this guy's the best. <laughs> 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 Welcome to to the world I live in in D and D. <laughs> Hope you spooks enjoyed that frightful beginning, but there's more scares right around the corner. Part two of the game is up on Dingo's channel. See you there, if you dare. Ah, ha, ha, ha.